everybody. Here I am, Karen Friedland, coming you, to you today from quite warm Brooklyn, New York. And up in my studio on the third floor, which is always at least 10 or 15 degrees warmer, except in the winter when it can be colder. So I wanted to talk to you today about um, some warming up, warm ups, and in fact, I figured I'd do some warming up today because I haven't yet painted, having run some errands this morning. And um, I thought maybe you'd like to paint along with me. So um, I'm hoping that you will do so. Uh, before we get started, anybody who's looking for me on Instagram can find me at artist Karen Friedland. And I post a lot of um, art and, and teaching art and all sorts of things there. And to find my website is also my name, karenfriedland.com, and you can sign up for the mailing list, which gives you a free course on color and um, lets you know what's going on and, and gives you some great discounts on things and some promotions and just keeps you in the loop. I don't overuse it, so um, I'd love to have you on the list with me. So I'm going to get started, and I guess that people will come as they come, and they'll see what we're doing. Um, I'm going to tilt the camera down now so you'll be able to see. I've set up three um, approximately 7 by 10 pieces of watercolor paper. I will tell you honestly, I cut really wonky. And so the tape covers up the edges, but I wanted you to be able to see the borders between the three. And it's good to work on three at a time so you don't get too fussy about any one particular one. Um, I try and stay loose and fluid and keep things moving. And so that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll start with some, ah, oh, I should show you what I've got going on over here. Over here, I have my paints laid out. I've got um, some more bottles of paints. I've got alcohol and, um, and brushes and some things that we might use to manipulate the paints. This is a uh, color shaper and a fork and corrugated, whoops, the, the picture is reversed so I'm having a hard time finding it. Um, this we may use for making some shapes and all sorts of other things and you'll see them as we go along. I do have water and a mister and um, and brushes, of course. And I always try and use a fairly big brush. This or this, I like, I like flats and I like filberts a lot. And filberts are this kind of brush with the curved end. And you can see it, see the end is curved. I like working with filberts. They don't give you as straight an edge. Um, I don't believe in spending a fortune for my brushes, and a lot of times I use brush like this, which works really well. Most of the time I am working with flats though, and sometimes I work with rounds, and so I've got a round here as well. Um, I'm gonna start, I think, by um, maybe just spraying my papers so that when I add some uh, paint or ink here, this is being very stubborn, there it goes, they'll already be ready to flow. So I'm gonna start with some red F FW acrylic ink, 
and acrylic ink you don't have to go out and buy if you have fluid inks like the golden inks like this these fluid inks are really comparable to to these acrylic inks so you don't have to go and buy a lot more I'm just going to dot this on a little bit see what we can get when we um, spray it again oh I love when it does that so now we have a real juicy surface and um, I love seeing that. I think I'll add a little bit of, I think I'll add just a little bit. Oh, here I've got a new color that I haven't used in my golden fluid paints. It's fluorescent pink. Nobody said that this was going to be a subtle exercise. <laughs> I just uh, think it's it's fun to get out there and use colors and and enjoy them. We're so lucky to live in a time where um, color is well available to us. Ugh, I should have done this beforehand because this top is being very stubborn. And so if you'll just bear with me for a moment while I get this peeled. And um, I'm wondering what you guys are watching nowadays on YouTube. Who, What other artists you're paying attention to? I know I always have um, my preferences. I'm going to forget this. And I'll just use purple instead. Um, purple, of course, is close to red on the color wheel. Boy, I'm really having some stubborn paints here today. Oh, there we go. And it just leads in beautifully. And when you have colors that are close to one another on the color wheel, they're called analogous colors. And they live together very well. They're very harmonious with one another. And I'm just using um, the top of this to move the paint a little bit. And boy, it's drying already. That tells you how hot it is here. I'm going to see if I can get some drips off of this. Whoops, that was the wrong thing to drip on the tape. And we'll see if we can get any of these to move. Not moving too much today, but that's okay because a lot of this is going to get covered up. And in fact, as, um, as we're working on this, I'm going to blow this ink around a little bit and dry it off. I think it'll dry quickly because of what we've got going on here with the heat. And any of the paint, I like to work very wet, but it's hard when doing demos like this to get everything to dry up so you can do another layer.
And I'm also blotting this off so we can keep moving and not have to worry about it holding us up. Because really, with the watercolor paper, I haven't just said this paper, so the inks are sinking in and drying pretty quickly. Of course, if you want your colors to stand up more on your paper, make sure that you gesso your surface first. It gives you a different, a different effect, depending on whether you do. You know, the paints look somewhat different, but either way is completely fine. So I'm going to um, start by adding a little bit more red onto these pages because I kind of want to have red as my undercoat here. And I'm going, actually, I'm with a crimson magenta. And I'm just using a paper towel to get this on quickly. And this is um, just a fun way to work. Stick that tape down a little bit. So, hi, Kyla. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you both. How great to have you here. Here I am complaining about the heat, and I'm sure Florida is way hotter than Brooklyn is. And here we go. This one, this time it was really wet. So I'm going to get all three of them have some nice red background so we can um, get some tone on the paper. And I love, well, those of you who know me may know that I'm a red person. Red's, red's my favorite color, as my granddaughter will be happy to tell you. And I use it a lot happily with other happy colors. And um, one of my favorite combinations are the contrast between red and aquas, like this, turquoise. Oh, and I got a wonderful new paint color. I'm just dying to dry, try this, so I put that on my palette today. And I thought we would see what that would do. But first, I think I'm going to get some more reds on our papers here. Uh, paintbrushes. Uh, shifty of me to have changed it to the other side. So, going to get some magenta. This is medium magenta by Liquitex. And it's um, a well-loved color by me. And I'm just getting the page covered with with these hot colors so we get a tone back here i want to get out to all the corners and the edges since i went and um covered them with tape sending you love to kyla and mary kyla and mary are both Friends of mine from the Right Brain Business Plan, and both of them are artists and business geniuses. So you can look for both of them on um, Facebook and, and on the internet. And there's they have a lot of wisdom, which I've been lucky enough to have shared with me And Kyla teaches book arts, and I took an, a uh, workshop with her last weekend, but I haven't gotten my book made yet. Kyla, does that put me behind for the class? So we'll see what she says. Okay, I'm going to uh, quickly hit these with a little bit more 
piece so that they will be dry by the time we put the next layer on. And by having layers in your artwork, when you scratch through or, or go from one, one layer to another, you get the benefit of having the under layers show through. And this will add a lot of richness to your pictures as you're working and just enhance them. They also have, when you have layers, somehow, even if you don't see them, there's something about it that makes it feel a little ancient. I don't know why that is, but um, it adds, you actually add to the history of the painting. Let me get another paper towel. And by adding to the history of the painting, somehow that comes through in the upper layers. And um, so now um, I'm going to bring in some some azure blue and this is by golden and azure blue is um a very transparent color i don't know if you can see on here this strip at the top over there golden paint puts those on all of their tubes of paint and it's very helpful because it tells you the translucency of the paint so that you'll know what will come shining through. If you use it thick, you'll get a nice solid color. And I'll show you a little bit of that here. See, I'm using it very thick and it's very solid. But as I pull it out, and get some more water on it, you'll start to see how transparent it truly is. And it really just um, becomes a film over the other paint. And that's why it was important for me to get the paint dry underneath it because otherwise they'd mix together and you just have a sense of mud all over this, all over the place. So um, as you can see, I'm working on all three. And I don't wanna get bogged down anywhere. And I'm pulling, pulling this uh, translucent paint out so we get some of the transparency on it. And um, then I'm going to start introducing the more opaque paint. And this paint is called Aqua Green. Aqua Green is um, made by Liquitex. Of course, every company has it and it's just delicious and thick and beautiful. And so I wanna get some on there with our blues. And see what we can get going here. And in fact, I'm just going to put it right onto the paper there where I want it. And any paint can be made more transparent as you thin it out. But with the opacity there, you can take implements and start making marks in them here with this fork. 
I've got the opportunity to, uh, well, that looks like a violin to start making some impact with with the solid color, with the thicker color. Add a little bit more out here. But of course you see we've had, we have the beautiful reds and pinks coming through there that makes it, that lets it give you a peek at what happened before. And we all like to be let in on a secret. So that's kind of what happens when you do this. I can also use a color shaper and that's what this is called. It's got a rubber tip and they come in all different shapes and um, one can use them like that. Okay, this is all ready to dry. And I realize I want to get another blue-green color going in here. And this is also Liquitex. I like Liquitex a lot. I usually use their soft body. This happens to be their heavy body. And this, this is Cobalt Teal. And actually, all the paint companies make a cobalt teal. It's a very popular color. I'm not the only person who loves it. And uh, how about you guys? Do you have any favorite colors that you find yourself working with over and over again? I must admit, these are some of my favorites, but I end up using the whole spectrum of color. Less on the neutrals, however. So here we go. My cobalt teal is on here. And, um, uh, at this point, I think I'll use the back of my paintbrush to make some marks. And by making the marks, they'll even sometimes drag them into the paint into the other parts, which is good by me. See here, I'm using the back of the paintbrush. Oh, I do love these colors. They're really making me so happy just to just to move this paint around on the paper. And I think that's one of the great things, you know, just have fun. Let this let this make you glad because aren't we lucky to be able to do this? I just think you know, I'm really blessed to have art in my life, and um, I don't think you need to be a rocket, you know, a special, special talent in order to have that. And I'm going and bringing a little bit more of the red back in here, plus I hadn't used, this is cadmium red. And uh, cadmium is not particularly good for you. And in fact, that's one of the additives that um, the paint companies are working on getting rid of. And so, um, and Liquitex has been very responsive on this. If you look at Lix Liquitex's latest line of colors, you'll see that they have a number of colors that are they call non-cadmium. And those are versions 
of these colors that do not have any cadmium in them. And so they're safer to use. And I'm planning, I've already bought some of them. And as my other cadmium colors run out, I will be adding more non-cadmium to what I have. I think um, it's time to give it maybe a little shot of, oh, first, I think I want to use my scraper, also known as trusty credit card. See what I can get with that. I love being able to pull color off and put some down with this. So I took it off there and hopefully I'll be able to put it down there. Give me a nice line. Okay, so we're going to hit this, get my brush in the water. You don't want to leave your brush out too long. Have that dry in there. So here we are, drying this up. Oh, and I have my wonderful new color that I want to try. I'm going to get that going here as I um, blot off my brush. Get these still wet areas coated over enough so I can add another color on top of them. Sorry, that's one of the problems with working so wet. And lately I've been listening to on, um, on YouTube, I've been watching a lot of Robert Burridge videos and um, he helps me remember to stay loose and enjoy what I'm doing. And that's what I hope to be helping you guys to remember now as you watch this. His, his book is Pain, Fast, and Loose, or something of that sort. But he is a great proponent of staying loose and letting the pain do the work. And I like that attitude. And let's see, if this isn't dry yet, I'm going to blot it some. Oh, not bad. Just looks like it's the wet. Okay, so now I'm going to do some, some work with this beautiful Arctic, it's Lucas Krill Studio and it's called Arctic. So it's a really soft green blue. And um, and it's a great color for for editing. And I think I will uh, edit here and add some alcohol to it. And let's see what we can get when we add the alcohol. This is, oh, look. We're seeing those ridges from the paint. Isn't that cool? I just love all this stuff that happens. In fact, I'm going to take some of this off so we can see that. Um, put it down along there. Whoa, 
I went a little crazy with the alcohol there. I usually use a sprayer, but I know that that's not great for your health. So I didn't have anything thick enough, thin enough there for the alcohol to do much for me. So we'll just leave it the way it is. And, um, and then I'm going to hit this next painting with some of this Arctic. I try as much as possible when I'm working to be standing. I'm not doing that right now because I wouldn't be able to be talking to you guys. But it usually serves me well and serves to keep what I'm doing nice and loose. Okay. Kind of editing back some of the areas. So that um, we don't have as much going on, but there's still those hints that let you know it was all underneath when we got there. So I'm going to add a little bit more the Arctic here. And I'm going to go in with um, some corrugated over here. Oh, oh and I got a nice, a nice stripey effect. Let's see if any of this is wet enough to still get that kind of effect. Oh, that's really interesting. One thing about the alcohol sitting on the paper, it will keep the paint soft and give it some extra drying time. And I really think I'm liking all three of these. I'm um, going to add a little touch now of orange and I don't think I'll use the fluoro orange I'm just oh before I do that I think I'm gonna take a pencil and hit it with a pencil do some drawing in here Plus it's nice to add character to your piece with the drawing. Oh, that's interesting. And um, maybe I'll try this time to do it with a Sharpie and see what that does for it. The Sharpie seems to be a little dead. Take another Sharpie. Okay, I kind of like that. And each tool, of course, gives you a different a different um, sense on what you're doing and I think I'll even take um, one of my inks and this is the FW ink and this is Payne's Gray and we'll see what drawing on this one in the Payne's Gray is like.
and I have a trimmer, but sometimes it works in my favor. So there we are. Each one looks pretty different, and um, I rather like them all. I think I'm going to give this a little blot here with the ink because it's very wet. And I want to show you a trick so you have the best sense of what your paintings look like. It's hard with all the other things going on around them. I've painted three and I've um, drawn on them and I've usually I have a lot of paint detritus over over on other parts of my um, table and so it's a little hard to see what they are actually looking like but if you have done any framing and have any corners from paintings that you've framed in the past or, or pieces you've had matted, you can take those and use them around your paintings to see what you really have. Of course, when you have tape on it like this, it usually helps as well. So we'll take the tape off and um, see what we have under here. <gasps> oh no! And I just tore the top of the painting. Well, that's something I can tackle with some medium to glue it back down again. But that's a little disturbing. But of course, these are just quick studies and uh, warm ups. And so I don't think I really have to worry about it too much. I don't expect them to be masterpieces. I just want to get my creative juices flowing. I want to remember what I know how to do because sometimes I forget. See that one tore too. This painter's tape is a lot stickier than it should be. But maybe it's the heat that has something to do with that. It is lovely to reveal a white edge so you can see the piece is a little better. See, this is ripping also. Yowza! That's not very nice. So I have my corners. I had my corners right here. Um, there they are. So you can take corners and put them around your paintings and then you can actually see what it looks like. So hopefully you can see this one. I'm going to tilt the whole computer up so you can see this better. You can see that one in the corners. So that's one we did. There you go. And I'll put the corners around the next one. And see how this looks. When it's isolated from other mess around it, there's that one. And here is my inked project, which is still quite wet. 
I can see. But it's not too wet for us to be able to do this to it. And I will get this one up for you to see as well. Okay. Well, there we are. And I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I think I'm going to keep doing some more, work on more paintings. And I'll come and see you next week with um, another painting live online. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Kyla. See you all. Bye.